It is our first morning on board Ruby Rose 2 in Turkey. This is Turkey. This is, uh, this is the port of Marmaris, the beautiful port of Marmaris. For those of you Europeans who have been here, we are in a beautiful, beautiful anchorage. A lot happened yesterday, and I'm going to be absolutely frank with you, dear viewers. It was all a bit overwhelming for us. Therese, how are you feeling about this? We're about to see how it works with the first one for like six weeks. So. Well, it's a beautiful bay to anchor in. Yeah, this is crazy. It's very surreal. All right, well, first person to spot Ruby Rose 2 gets a beer. Well, I haven't gone in because I don't know where she is. She's back on, well, she was unloaded last. Yeah. Well, there's that beautiful searing Mediterranean heat. Mediterranean heat, eh? So I'm going to kind of rewind and kind of tell you exactly what happened. We arrived in Turkey on Monday and yesterday we were told that the boat would be unloaded on tuesday now this filled me with a whole a whole heap of like anxiety i don't normally suffer from anxiety but this caused me anxiety one would the boat be damaged two would we find that the boat worked and would start and number three you know would how would it all pull together was everything going to start up again yes it did so everything did start up um so i put the fridges on i put the you know the nav gear back on and just got everything up and running and turned the engines live everything uh worked including our ice machine just dragged our luggage uh up onto the boat we are still on the ship as you can see it is oh it's quarter to five in thailand we need to change our clock <laughs> yay uh so yeah it must be about a quarter to 12 at uh, one when yeah, we're offloading in 15 minutes, exactly. And one of the things we're going to have to do very, very soon is clean this boat. She is filthy, absolutely filthy. So that's going to be a big, big job. A couple of things that were problematic for us. Number one, I realised about two days before I was meant to leave the UK that we didn't have the charts for Turkey. And I had been previously told about from Bernay and Seawind, just download the charts. Guess what? You can't download the charts in 2024 uh, if you want to buy a Navionics chart, you actually have to physically be sent the chart. There is some internal wrangle going on, which I'm sure someone down below will explain to me why you cannot. You can buy the C maps and see what, uh, or but the Navionics ones that I need, you cannot actually just download. So frantically, I had to get hold of the only company in the UK that sell the damn charts and have one express delivered to me. So put the little CSD card in, that worked, so we have charts. They dropped the boat in the water. So after that, we then motored about probably a half a mile to an anchorage, anchored in about 13 meters. Anchor went down fine, that's all set. And then we kind of went to look at our water tanks. We emptied the tanks um, before we left. And I said to Teresa, I said, make sure there's 10% left. We don't want a full water tank. I looked at the, the tankage and we've got like 30% fuel in one, 30% fuel in the next tank and 100% in our water tank. And I'm like, okay, we've got a sticky gauge. We only have 10%. Went to start the water maker and it still says 100%, nothing's moving. So I thought, mm, and then I kind of thought, oh, you d So anyway, I looked in the water tank and we have a 100% water tank because what we did is we left the freshwater rain catchment valve open and now our uh, our water tanks is filled with indian ocean and uh, african african rainwater <laughs> which we're selling at ten dollars a bottle <laughs> for those of you who want something very exclusive so if anyone wants uh, madagascan rainwater uh ruby rose special we are selling it in uh, in numbered bottles on our only fans page <laughs> yesterday evening we went ashore just to buy beer <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. We, we went ashore just to buy some milk and some other bits so we could have breakfast this morning on board. Yeah, had, had dinner dinner in a lovely little Turkish restaurant. I think we've got probably two or three days work here. There is so much to do to get this boat ready. Aside from cleaning, we've got to go and look at the mainsail. We've got to put that Baden car on that we broke in Thailand. We've got to put the jib on. We've got to make sure everything works. We've got to do so. It's a, and so, yeah, get, get fuel. And then hopefully in a couple of three days, we'll be off again. Welcome to our first full day at Anchor on Ruby Rose 2 in Turkey. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Oh God, never ends, is it? The only thing we could not get working yesterday was drum roll. What am I guess? So I'm going to go and have a look at that water maker again. I'm just clearing all the filters out. 
putting new, new everything in so it can't whine about having older filters. Seriously, what? Hello. Morning, Mama. How are you? All right, Mama. Well, honestly, nothing to report here. No, no, I'm still dealing with them as, you, as I talk to you now. I'm still trying to fix our detailer later. All right, Mama, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Nick's green flag is that he calls his mum or his mum calls him every single day. Is it always, did it always used to start with a freshwater flush? Yes, it starts with a freshwater flush. I would say to you that one thing we have found, like, mate, you're a f***ing kettle board now, a cup of f***ing tea. Jesus Christ. 358 and we're making water. So we are finally making water. New filters, new everything. So we have feed pressure 7.3, filter condition 80%. But this is the important thing. 304 parts per million. Yay. Yours is the blue and mine is the pink, or did you want pink? <laughs> I think I like the shade of blue. <laughs> it's the middle of the day, it's quite warm, even though it's still just the beginning of the season. So it's only gonna get hotter and hotter as the year goes on, but that's okay. I'm happy, I am in Turkey. I cannot believe that we are here. I have been in a jet lagged haze since arriving and uh, I'm only just starting to kind of clear the cobwebs. I had to travel from Australia. So that was like three flights to get here to Marmaris and then an hour and a half in the car and then an overnight stay and then on the ship and then on the boat and then here. So I've had like a random few days. How you going babe? Yeah, I'll do the other side later. Yeah. Like that, don't yeah, those windows look amazing. This is going to take a month to clean this one. I'm not this. I know, I know. No, this, this isn't hyperbole. No, I know. That breeze coming through those hatches is mighty, mighty fine. So I just wanted to point something out to you. We have been at anchor for um, 24 hours, a bit over, 26 hours maybe. And I've just noticed that our batteries are 96%, still making power, which means that over the last 24 hours, we have managed, what do you call it? Maybe like power parity. We've basically been making as much energy as we've been using, which is fantastic news. Um, we have had kind of mixed results at this because we spent an, uh, a week in a Thai anchorage and we had to run the engine three times. By the way, we haven't done like a full episode on power management. You can hear Nick singing in the background. <laughs> He's listening to music while cleaning. Um, because we just wanted to give ourselves plenty of time to really work out, to, to collect enough data and really work out what is using up a lot of electricity, what um, perhaps like for example if we didn't run the ice machine whether that would mean that we could use the air conditioning, can we run the air conditioning at night without running the engine, all those kinds of things like how much power do we actually put into the battery in the middle of the day with no shadows on the solar panels kind of in these kind of conditions where you've just got sun and that's it like in Turkey versus is there any difference to the power that we're making like in Asia for example where the quality of light is different you might get some cloud cover so we just wanted to give ourselves time to really settle into life on the boat before we made that kind of power management episode because it requires a lot of kind of experience and data gathering over a long period of time. Hello, how are you going? Well, I found out that these are rust stains. Oh, they're rust stains? Yep. How, so how did that happen? Probably, I know what it is because it always happens. They must have welded something. And what they don't realize is as soon as you weld anything, you leave all the little sprays or they angle ground something. And all the little tiny minuscule microscopic bits of welding dust or metal dust. Actually, they all I know. Well, it's dust, it's microscopic dust. That every single bit of dust turns some iron into iron oxide. An oxalic acid, diluted oxalic acid would just, you haven't even got a scrub. So there's salt and the salt needs to come off and there's grime. But look, this, all I've done is just wipe oxalic acid yeah, across it. Yeah, it's so good. Leave it. And so I've got all the rust remover here. And I'll just, I'd have to just do the whole boat. Literally the entire boat, every visible inch. Like it's here. Here, that was inside. Like here, all under there. Can you see? Hang on. Like, all under here. 
literally everywhere. Every exposed inch of boat. I mean, look at this. So what happens is you put a dilute oxalic acid solution onto iron oxide stains. Don't need to scrub at all. You just wipe it over and it's gone, like in a minute. Because of science. Yeah, science the <laughs> of this. All right, it's 5.30 and I just had to point out, we are, we have 100% batteries. Nick just did a supermarket run, our first provisioning trip since getting to Turkey, because we've just been going out for food and then eating like bread. Um, we've been here for two nights, yeah, we've eaten out twice. Anyway, no need to do that anymore because these are all the Mediterranean vegetables I have literally been dreaming about for months. I'm so, so excited. We've got like lovely tomatoes, cucumber, zucchini, lemon, eggplant. I'm so happy right now. Big tub of yogurt. We've got honey from Thailand. Olives, honey from Thailand. Feta. They're little pofty kebabs to grill. Oh. I got peanuts for you. Two different types, and if you don't like the first type of peanut, because there's some sort of a thing about you're not liking a certain peanut. That, my friends, is how we broke our microphone. I just want to say to the three people who turned up on their dinghy to say hello because they recognised us in our boat, and Nick was like, hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. And uh, I kind of just waved from my chair. I'm really sorry if I seemed a little bit um, standoffish. You caught us at a really bad time. <laughs> after we just broken our microphone, which is worth quite a bit of money. Sorry, if, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry that um, I didn't jump up and say hello. Just caught us <laughs> at a particularly tense time. Anyway, we have a microphone that's hopefully working. Yeah, you keep an eye on those sound levels. Right? Yeah. Anyway. Th this is our old mic from several years ago. So anyway, we're gonna try and find a new one, a shotgun, like good one. But in the meantime, Hopefully this will do, and we are, not we, Nick is um, cooking some lovely fish. So tonight's dinner is gonna be a little bit of a, a little bit of Turkish bread. We're gonna have some uh, chipotle. I don't know what chipotle is. Is it, is it bream or perch? No, that's not, I don't think that's a bass. It's either perch or bream. Can someone tell us what this fish is? Chipotle. And actually it's the same in Greek as it is in Turkey. I'm not an octopus. Nor am I. I we can say, I've dropped the buddy. <laughs> Listen, you've dropped things and broken things a lot, and I never give you a hard time when you break something. Actually, uh, how do you spell chipotle? C I P R I A. U R I A. U R I A. Chipotle. <laughs> the face. All right, wait a second. Sorted my aubergines. Because all aubergines always need to be salted. Actually, I think that's a myth. That's bollock. Don't. don't I think, no, I think don't, just because Michael Spandrio said that you didn't need to. Do not listen to Michael Spangio. Michael Spangio. What is going on with your hair? <laughs> I think it's like the young eggplant or the old egg. I don't know. Not open it. Anyway. The young or old, you sort eggplant. In this and when you stop calling it, but in this household, it's aubergine. So it's a little bit cloudy tonight. We talk about the weather now. So there's a little, yes, it is. Stop looking at my hair. <laughs> we will be sailing the Mediterranean, Greece, and Turkey all this season. So give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Apparently they're the same thing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And we will all see you next week. Goodbye.